All right, guys, welcome back. The next thing to do is to deal with a render target. Okay, so back here to our uh, hash out render, we can actually be uh, initializing that uh, already. So it's going to be of the type texture render target 2D uh, class. You texture render texture render target 2D. Quite a long name. And this is going to be, we can call this guy render target. Okay. And then this one, of course, will has to be also initialized. Okay, so in our native construct, uh, we just need to say, hey, render target will be equals to a new object. Because this one is a new object, we can use the memory management system. The reason we have to uh, manage the texture render target to the and this is the owner so the reason we have to do the previous thing in the old style like new delete is because this one uh, if you look at the type it's not you object that's why we did it in the first place it's a uh, also it has the garbage collection uh, object so you can do something about it <laughs> uh, I just uh, I feel like lazy so I'm just gonna do the old school new delete uh, some people may don't like that. All right, all right so we have the new object uh, from the render target. Let me double check. Am I making an AU property? Yes, I did. So this one will be managed for me. All right. And then we can also set up some basic uh, basic formatting. So render target dot init auto uh, format, which would require us to include the header file here, which is going to be uh engine and then texture render texture render target to the dot h uh, this is the header file there and then we can say uh render target in it auto format and we just have to make sure that, that we have the size we want. So I'm going to go for something like 256. You can, of course, make that a variable uh, to be able to define it. OK. Um, and then we can also say render target. Oh, I have a typo there. We can also say, hey, the render target format will be equals to each texture render target format. Format. And then the one we're looking for is RTF RGBA 8 sRGB, I believe. Uh, the reason I need RGBA here is that I need the alpha there so we can render some transparent background. Okay. And then I believe we can set up one more thing, uh, which is the filter will be equals to texture filter, colon, colon, uh, the max. Okay, that will give us the better filter there. Okay. And I believe that's the setup of the render target. Now that render target just has to be the one being used by the actor renderer there. Okay, so let me provide a pu public setter here. Set render target, and then it's gonna take you uh, texture render target two D. And that's gonna be the tech target texture. Render target, I guess. And then all we have to do is saying, hey, will the capture set render target? Target texture, tech target texture. Texture target will be equals to render target. Okay, 
That way, the capture will render to this particular render target. That's what we're trying to do here. Okay, because this one is public, we can set it here right away after we have the render. We can just say render. Set render target. Be our render target. Okay, all right. Now that will all allow us to render it to the render target. Okay. Now at the meantime, we need to we wanted to be able to see it, right? We need to render that into uh, an image here. Okay. So let me create another U property. And this one is going to be of the type uh, image. Render image, something like that. Or hash out render uh, hash out image to be very specific. That's where the hash out will be rendered on top of. It. So this hash out a hash out image uh, will be then. Uh, we don't need to initialize it here. That's right. We can just do meta equals to uh, band widget. Uh, so this is saying, hey, well, whatever widget we listed here, that's of the type uh, that's have the this band widget. Uh, the would will require the child class to have that particular type in in there, uh, particular component. Okay, in the designer. So this one will have to include uh, the components and image. Yeah, and then we all have to say to to say here is the headshot image. Oops. Uh, set get dynamic material because I like to be a material here. <laughs> okay, set uh, texture parameter. And then the texture will be our uh, render target. And it does require a name there. And the color sky render target parameter name. Uh, hash shot image texture param name something like that I believe, and let let me just make that also a U property. Uh, F name. And I can give it a default value, I believe. And the default value will be uh, hash shot in texture or something. Okay, so basically we're now using that render target, which will be rendered by the renderer's scene capture component. Uh, that will be the texture being used by the dynamic, dynamic material, dynamic material of the image that's on the UI. That's the basic logic here. Okay. And let's see. So now we can go to the uh, editor and compile it, and then we can set up the material there. Okay, so let me do that real quick. Oh, got an error there. Oh yeah, the arrow is expected because then it's comp complaining about missing that particular hash out image. Uh, so let me actually populate this. Uh, let me add in a. Uh, I guess I can just add in that image if I don't want to have additional things. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be the hash shot image. Uh, and then uh, I'm gonna go for. 256 by 256. That's basically the render resolution there, uh, and then the image will be a material there, and this one will be desired as well. And then the image will be the material, right? Uh, so let me go ahead and make that material real quick. M headshot. So this M headshot will be the material being used. Uh, let me go. To the image there and drag that over. 
and it's complaining because the type of the material is um, not UI. That's fine. Let me change that to user interface, translucent. And that should be it. And uh, I need to set up a texture parameter. Texture sample parameter 2D. And this will be uh, the headshot texture that's going to be the same as the this one, ah, not this one, this one, this one. Yeah, it, it is this one, right? The, the material uh, par parameter name. And that will be the one goes to final color. And then the alpha goes to the opacity. So that's why I want the alpha, right? Save that. OK. All right. So this looks all good. So let's see, am I missing anything? I don't think so. So let me play this. And you can see we we see a black image, right? So that black image means that uh, even we're rendering, uh, we're ticking, right? Those things are working. Uh, but the problem is that these guys are not rendering because again, Unreal just likes one U world. The rendering <laughs> needs to be also manually um, invoked, basically, right? So we can try to invoke the rendering. Okay. Now back here to our uh, code, right? And let's find our native tick. Okay. So let's just do it in uh, in this tick function for now. And all we have to do is tell the renderer and, and just say update or update yeah update capture okay uh, which we don't have a function like that but we can make one real quick and then in here we just don't need to do anything other than just ask the tech capture to uh, update deferred capture and then uh, and it's no the scene right and so we can pass in that scene here um let's see f scene interface scene okay and then let me uh put that in here and this of course will be the argument also here so basically, we have the function we can call, and uh, we can just force it to update. All we have to do is passing in the preview world and get uh, get scene, I guess. Get scene preview scene. Get scene. Uh, there's a get physics scene i want to use the get scene doesn't exist should be uh preview scene maybe the preview scene is the one yeah this one has access to the scene let's see yeah this is the world scene <laughs> so we could just say preview world scene or something uh, that will actually force the capture to be updating. Um, and we're using the uh, update deferred captures. Um, the other one is just update this capture, uh, do sync capture or something. That one have a warning, has a warning which is saying that there is a major performance hit if you do that. Uh, this one still have some, you'll see very soon, and we need to figure out a way to get it actually be a bit faster. But let's try to see if we're capturing out the scene. All right, now let's play it. You can see now, yes, indeed, we're seeing the capture. Uh, it's in a weird state. <laughs> Looks like the alpha is flipped, right? That's not good. So I'm gonna go to the uh, WPP headshot material, that material there. And it looks like the alpha is the offset of 
opacity <laughs> so let me hold it down open to click the to drop down a one minus a node so that we got the flipped version of the alpha and now lo and behold <laughs> we finally got our uh, texture rendered okay uh, now of course uh, we can spice it up pretty easily by looking for the skeletal mesh we can actually use an animation asset and look for the addo animation okay and then we can also have the capture there and we can drag it a little bit closer I believe and then also we can add in some light add in the point light maybe Ooh. and one more and I like to be a little bit of a red color I like the red color as the rim light to give it a lot of personality there Now you can see how we're seeing the character being rendered, right? Uh, some more additional tweaking can be done. Like I think the image is basically uh, there. Let, let me do size to content, right? So it's not uh, stretched. Uh, let me also change the alignment. So it's somewhere, somewhere here, I think, somewhere here. Um, that's gonna look better. Yeah. And then also we could uh, bring it closer. One thing we could do is because we're having everything as actual cameras and stuff, we can change the field of view to 25. And that way we're basically seeing a less stretched version of the image. You can see we're seeing the head of the character very nicely. And maybe just a little bit lower so we're seeing like a better shot. And a little bit closer to the side. So basically this is our headshot being rendered already very nice now let's uh go into the next video i'm going to talk you through some performance considerations on this although it's working it's actually taking some performance because we're literally rendering another camera right so not because we have a new world it's because we're basically rendering again right so that's why it's slow and we need to figure out a way to actually make it a little bit faster okay see you guys next time